Hi everyone. In this video, we'll go over something called Jupyter Notebook. This is what we'll be using it for most of the time in our tutorial uh, to learn Python. Uh, to get started with the Jupyter Notebook, uh, before starting it, it is something like uh, you can see that's a notebook environment like this, and that's going to give us a way of writing Python code very easily and easily, uh, at least for the learning purpose. Uh, so Jupyter comes with two different versions of it. One is called the Jupyter Lab. Another one is Jupyter Notebook itself. So this was the original version of it. They call Jupyter Lab as Jupyter's next generation notebook interface. Uh, this is what we will be using it mostly. And uh, this is also is installed. Both of them, Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab, is installed in our Anaconda distribution. Uh, so what we are going to do here is we're going to use uh, our Conda package manager start and spin up a Jupyter notebook environment for us so that we can use our Python code right so let me minimize this and uh, I'm going over my desktop itself and let's start our command prompt just by typing e opens, opens the command here Click. all right uh, so here, as you know, that we are access to this command conda. So if I write conda version, then you should be able to see this. If you are not able to see this, then it means that your uh, conda path has been not and uh, configured properly. So please go ahead and watch the second part of this. And uh, also, if you should be access to Python hyphen hyphen version as well. So conda has so many uh, facilities for us. So for example, conda has uh, Facility to activate an environment uh, so that we can activate uh, so that we can one work on something called Python's virtual environment. Uh, to do that, we have to just run a command called conda activate. Uh, activate. And if I do this, then that could spin up something called a base environment, which is already there uh, the Anaconda distribution. So Anaconda comes uh, by default as base environment. We can also create a new environment for ourselves uh, that we will see in the uh, later videos. As of now, we'll just work with base environment, right? Fine. Uh, to deactivate any environment using Conda, so simply type Conda and then deactivate. Will deactivate the Conda environment, right? Fine. So if I spin up my Jupyter notebook, let me activate my Conda. So the Environment on activate. Now I can also say um, now I can type Jupyter notebook in hyphen hyphen version uh, to check that whether Jupyter notebook has been installed in my environment or not. Right. So Jupyter notebook is something called as a package. So any environment is coming with some set of packages. So uh, what usually does uh, this uh, Anaconda is it is uh, Creating a base environment where it is actually installed all the packages, whichever is coming out the, along on that piece, right? Fine. Now I said Jupyter Lab is also installed for us, so I can say Jupyter Lab Lab uh, Lab hyphen hyphen, and that has actually is installed something called the base environment. Good. So let's spin up this Jupyter notebook from here. I write the notebook. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say. Suppose uh, if for some reason, if your Conda Activate is not working for you, uh, like in my case, uh, remember uh, we are starting the Conda environment for the first time. So you also have to do this one. So let me deactivate it first of all. You would have started here in for you. So if you are already going to start here, you need to write Conda in it. And that will initialize your Conda environment might show you some of the commands are modified because we have added the paths of the uh, Honda and as well as the Python in some parts in the last video but that would have modified something. So if you are starting for the first time, uh, I hope uh, everybody who is following the series would have been following for the first time. So you need to run this command called Conda in it before write uh, the activate or deactivate. Once you run this command conda in it, it might show some of the comments is modified. For me, it's saying there's no change because I have just initialized conda before starting this. So once you do this, close this terminal once, then reopen your command prompt. 
Now, if you run Conda activate, that should run for you. That's a that's the environment. Um, of course, I want to spin up this Conda uh, Jupyter lab here. That might open my environment right at this place. Of course, one environment will be base, but it will open my file structure over here inside my C drive. I don't want to do it. So what I will do is let me deactivate my environment and close up this uh, command prompt. I'm going to go to my uh, file explorer and in any of my drive. So for example, I have drive called education. Under that, I have a folder called my repos, and under that, I have a, a folder. I don't have any folder. I'll create a new folder called getting started with. Okay. Now let me go inside this folder. So I want to run my all the R. I want to save all my Python files inside this folder. Right? I don't want to save anything outside of this folder, or in other words, I want to keep my project lit. So to do this, what we have to do here is uh, come inside this place and. Uh, what you can do here, you can just select all of them in the uh, uh, in the or like this, like me, and uh, type cmd in the top and press enter. So that should open up a command prompt. To open up a terminal. Now this time, instead of saying c colon uh, users slash mage for me in my case, it's now saying f colon rep, my repos getting started with. My Means actually, what it does is it opens a command prompt and it is changing the directory to this. Place. That's all it is. So go ahead and change your directory to whatever the folder you want to work with. Now, what you can do, you can activate your the, the activate. The activate. So now it runs my base environment. Now I am access to my Jupyter lab. Open a Jupyter. Lab by typing the lab. Remember, after Conda activate, it should be visible like this. And then, if you run Conda to Jupyter Lab, that should fire up Jupyter Lab. So that spinned up my Jupyter lab over here. Now I am working with the uh, folder which I have just inside here. So anytime I create any file or uh, any file or if I save any files, then it will be saved here. So current working directory is getting started with Python. Form. So wherever you have solved, uh, wherever you have saved, it should be fine. So this is a Jupyter Labs environment, Jupyter Labs interface over here. So here I have many options here. One is a file tab and then edit, view, uh, run, kernel, everything. So before going over everything, any, any of this, now I have something called notebook, console, and others. So the notebook will create the notebook environment. Console will, of course, create a uh, integrated terminal for you so that you can run the Python code. Console. Now what we wanted is something called notebook. So under the section of notebook, now we want to create a Python 3 notebook. Create a Python 3 notebook just by creating, just by clicking on this Python. So now what it does is it just opens an untitled .ipynb, which is an IPython notebook. Uh, so the Jupyter notebook is of course uh, just an IPython notebook. So now I have something called cells. Now I can actually create new cells by add this plus button over here so if you click on plus then it should create a new cell here you can one more one more one more creates new cells over here. so in between these scales of course inside these cells i can run my python okay so before doing anything else here i can reopen my uh, sorry i can just rename my ipython notebook over here by right clicking on this uh, ipython file and uh, over here where is the name yeah so let's do uh, maybe this is uh, part two, right? Now let's say simply let's start. 
get started my file name thing enter saves the file changes here as well as uh, to prove it to you that these files are actually saved in wherever this uh, folder has been actually opened now you can go to this folder wherever you have opened your file you can see that there is a folder called ipython checkpoints which has been created uh, that is to just uh, keep track of where what you are doing and what you are saving here and there is a file called let's get started.ipn this is what we have created so any python file whichever i am going to create will be actually inside this folder right that's all okay i can also create a new folder from here just by create clicking this new folder option over here which is just after right right after this and i can put this uh, files inside that also it's also possible so that's why jupyter lab is uh, famous than the jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook does not give this option all right uh, now I can run this Python code inside this. So I can click on this button over here to keep the uh, sidebar away from me. Then uh, let me probably I can quit and I show you what I have. Done. So Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebook, uh, what it does is it gives you an opportunity to work with cells. So each cell you can run it independently. For example, if I simply type one plus three and then run this cell, the way I run that cell is uh, if you go to this run, the top, if you go to the run and then run select, there are multiple options to run the cells. So one is run selected cells, which is right now for me, wherever my cursor is there, that's what my selected cell. I can click on this and run the cell like this. Or I can even press something called shift enter in my uh, keyboard to run the cell. Or otherwise, there is a play button over here in just uh, in the top here. I can click on that button. So any of this will run the cell over here. Click on this button, and now it creates the output for you. One plus three is equal. Very right, good. So because like we have uh, successfully launched the Jupyter notebook, and we have started writing our Python. Of course, in any course, what they will do usually is they take off this and lets you print a hello world my application just by typing in. And open parenthesis and type hello world inside the code. Okay, so that runs this piece of code. Now I have another cells as well as I have created over here. You can uh, create uh, multiple cells like this and you can run the different effects. For example, I can write I am and I can run this cell independently over here. Remember, while running this cell, this is getting unaffected, which means this is not running at all. This is not even actually having any effect on what we are. Okay. So this is something very cool in Jupyter Lab, so that we can run the codes piece by piece and check what is the error, or even actually while you are teaching and all, it's very easy. If you are teaching. So there are multiple options over here uh, to check for ourselves. Uh, first of all, I want to discuss something called save here. So if you click on this button over here, you can save it. You can also click and save here over here in this file tab. So save notebook, triple S will save that notebook. And uh, there is something called plus button here, which is actually inserting a new cell below. Wherever you are, if my cursor is here, and if I type this, then it will uh, create a new cell over here. And there's a button called cut actually. Uh, that is usual uh, in your thing. For example, if I select the cell and if I write a cut, that actually cuts the cell. For example, I write something and click on this, and that takes off the cell, of course. Now I have a paste, uh, copy and paste options are also there over here. So let's say, suppose I click on this place and click copy and click paste, and that's actually copying this complete cell and pasting it over here in the below. That's all it does. And of course, I said here, this is the uh, running the cells command and this is suppose sometimes whenever this cell is getting executed and it is not getting terminated at all it's getting into some loop or for loop or while loop or something like that and you can click on this button to interrupt the kernel so which is usually open shown here what kernel is actually running and you can interrupt the kernel uh, and restart your work uh, for example if you simply write a while loop this file true uh, print uh, uh, if you click on this remember this uh, star button is there and if you notice that your uh, notebook it's still printing 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 print keeps on printing uh, it's never going to end because always uh, true is going to be there so 
to avoid this kind of things what you can use is something called interrupting the kernel so by clicking on this you click on this and the kernel is getting interrupted and it just stops printing and uh, tell me to do okay that's all it does and something called restarting the kernel over here so if you click on this button it will ask you confirmation to restart the kernel which is the exact same job of interrupting the kernel and also it's restarting the kernel and there is a uh, restart the kernel then rerun the whole notebook there's an option which means uh, it will restart the kernel and runs uh, cell by cell in a same order whatever the cell is arranged and it will do that then the final option is called as a uh, it's a drop down box where it gives you code markdown and drop so the code is by default whichever has been selected which means by default whatever you are writing has been usually considered as a python code so if i run uh, a uh, plus b sorry a and then uh, comma b then it should actually prompt an error it says it's a name error because there is nothing like a comma b as a code right so to make these things available uh, there is something called markdown uh, language incorporated in the python notebook uh, sorry jupyter notebook uh, that i think uh, maybe it takes one small uh, tutorial on what to do with the markdown and that stuff and all right now what we can do here is we can click on this markdown and now this cells we can leave it as it is even if i compile it what it does is gives you the information about what we want to do over here the markdown state so if i double click on it and if i run anything i wanted i can do here for example if i want to take some note here uh, is some note about what am i doing and you can write some steps uh, step one step two step three and you can also make some title here like by putting some hashes right title for the rest of them like this and now if i compile this that's good so this is come something called the markdown i'll explain this in a separate video how i have got all of them and what I, what is the commands to do all of them so some title this is text and this is so as of now what you have to do here is you just go to this uh, place over here and select this uh, markdown set and then write the instructions section whatever you want to say and then compile the cell it won't get affected uh, that's a small overview of jupyter notebook and of course we need a lot of things to do in the jupyter notebook while going through the lectures or while going through the uh, topics we'll do discuss about some features of the See you in the next lecture. Thank you all. I'll see you in the next class.